Hello, and welcome to my library. When my wife and I were young and reckless and newly married, we moved into a clean apartment in a bad neighborhood. We had a peekaboo view of the hot box, a sketchy used car dealership turned medical marijuana facility. The hot box did all sorts of business until the feds raided it and ripped it down. It was a colorful neighborhood, gentrifying nicely, the ridiculously hip hair salons flanked by spools of razor wire. Everything was guarded by an ancient, mustached African woman who made it her business to know everyone else's. She was both reassuring and terrifying. Then our downstairs neighbor was shot at in the alley under our bedroom windows while we were sleeping, and we knew it was finally time to go. If our neighbor had maybe known the gunman, we could have shrugged it off, but he didn't, so we left. My wife got on Craigslist, and we found a beautiful condo miles away from our little patch of urban blight. The neighborhood was beautiful in ways only master planning and dozens of gardeners can make a neighborhood beautiful. Hedges replaced a smoke shop, joggers replaced narcotics entrepreneurs, and a well-heeled neighborhood watch replaced our fierce old protectors. But I've never seen the neighborhood watch and I can't even seem to make real eye contact with my own neighbors. Our new village at Cypress Canyon is safe and full of good people. We like to talk about our sister parish in the poor part of town and give canned goods to Mexican orphans and cover our giant SUVs with well-designed progressive bumper stickers. After all, 95% of high net worth Americans give to charity and our brave new neighborhood is no exception. But there's a problem. You see, real solidarity is messy. It means rolling up your sleeves. How do you connect to the folks you're trying to empathize with if you wall them off and then ignore your own neighbors? I know our city in the hills has made me less connected and less aware. I don't have to endure gunfire anymore, but I do have to start making eye contact. And that's this installment of Solidarity with Salisbury.